video lesson is the first of several video lessons for our unit from uh, unit 8.5 on stoichiometry. And um, we're, our first lesson is something called mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry. The Greek stoichion translates roughly to element measurement. So what is stoichiometry? It is a way for us to predict a, or a predict a measured quantity from a chemical reaction. If we know how much we are starting from in a given reaction, we can predict how much we're going to get from a product or from uh, an expect from a amount of product that we want to make, we can predict how much of each reaction reactant we're going to need to make the reaction happen. And so this comes down to understanding what these coefficients of a balanced equation can really do for us. So far, we know that those balanced uh, coefficients uh, in front of this particular chemical reaction where nitrogen is reacting with hydrogen gas to produce ammonia gas, it's a ratio of 1 to 3 to 2. And we can interpret that as the number of molecules. We can say that one molecule of N2 is needed to react with three molecules of H2, and that will make a total of two molecules of ammonia. That's the most literal interpretation. But what we recognize here is that um, it's also a number of moles, because remember, one mole just is representative of a number of particles, right? Mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles or molecules. So we can very easily translate in this to mean that uh, this coefficient can mean one mole of nitrogen is reacting with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. And this is a more reasonable quantity for us to be working with because it's not very practical to be working with individual molecules. What we have to be careful of, though, is that those coefficients do not represent the number of grams. You cannot say one gram of nitrogen is needed to react with three grams of hydrogen to make two grams of ammonia. Now, we can factor that in if we know the molar mass of N2, Right, we, If we know one mole of N2, each nitrogen weighs uh, 14 grams from the periodic table. So together, two nitrogens would be 28 grams. So if you had 28 grams of nitrogen, uh, you would need, remember each hydrogen is one, about approximately one, but there's two hydrogens in the molecule times three. So that would be a total of six grams. So if you had 28 grams of nitrogen and 6 grams of hydrogen, that right there you can see, that's not a 1 to 3 ratio. Okay, we factored in the masses, right, because each one of those molecules weighs something different. That's why this isn't, those, those coefficients are not going to represent mass. But something interesting does happen regardless. If we add up the masses of two ammonia molecules, uh, each nitrogen weighs 14, Three hydrogens each at approximately one, so a uh, an ammonia molecule weighs about 17, but we have two of them, so that's 34 grams, right? And so we can see here that the, um, the uh, law of conservation of mass shows that uh, the mass of the reactants added up together are going to be equal to the mass of the products. So um, that's how that is justified. But the takeaway here is that the coefficients from a balanced equation is a mole ratio. Okay, so we've got some notes down here at the bottom to capture most of what we just talked about. Okay, so does one mole of nitrogen molecules, does that weigh the same as one mole of hydrogen molecules? No, we said that one mole of nitrogen molecules weighed 28. One mole of hydrogen molecules at H2, right, nitrogen's N2, uh, hydrogen is about one, so that's going to weigh about two grams. So, no, they weigh very different because they are different elements. We get those mass values from the periodic table. 
Is the mass ratio the same as the mole ratio? No, they are very different. We said the combined mass of the reactants was 34 grams. The mass of the product is 34 grams. That demonstrates the law of conservation of mass, and which says you cannot create matter. You cannot destroy matter. Okay, so uh, the takeaway from this first page is that the coefficients from a balanced equation uh, are going to be very simply interpreted as mole quantities. All right, let's take a look at the next page and see what we can do with that quantitatively. All right, so we have a balanced equation. We've got ozone with a coefficient of one. We've got nitrogen monoxide with a coefficient of three, and we have nitrogen dioxide with a coefficient of three as well. So the question here is, what is the molecule ratio of these chemicals in, the, in this reaction? We have one molecule of O2 to three molecules of NO uh, to three molecules of NO2. Okay, so there's that one to three to three ratio, and I was just reading those left to right. All right, so if we approach this problem conceptually, um, if we want to know how many molecules of NO2 could be produced from 25 molecules of O3, I'm sorry, I wrote O2 up there. That was, a, that was not very helpful. So let's say instead of one molecule of O3, we have 25 molecules of O3. Right, so we have, instead of one, we have 25 molecules of O3. How many molecules of NO2 can be made? Well, that was a ratio of 1 to 3. So 25 molecules of O3, you would need uh, 75 molecules, can't spell, of, of uh, NO, and 75 molecules of NO2. Right, so that's how you answer that question right there. How many molecules of O3 are needed to react with 1.81 times 10 to the 24 molecules of NO? So in this case, we're working with the quantity in the middle. So 1.81 times 10 to the 24 molecules of NO. We know that that quantity is going to be the same over here because that's a three to three ratio, right? So that's a, which is effectively a one to one ratio. So we know pretty quickly that we would have 1.81 times 10 to the 24 molecules of NO2. To figure out how many molecules of O3, we would have to divide this number by three in order to figure out the ozone. So if we were to do um, 1.81, tilt it so you can at least see it, but avoid that glare, 1.81, uh, to the 24th power, times 10 to the 24th power, divide by 3, and we're going to get approximately, um, it comes out to 6.03 times 10 to the 20, times 10 to the 23 molecules of O3. All right, so the, the coefficients can be used as ratios. All right. Um, so let's skip down to the takeaways here. In a balanced equation, the coefficients represent a ratio of the number of molecules. That's what this problem demonstrated pretty clearly. Uh, but it also represents moles, which um, we, that problem didn't really get to, except I guess that's the one I skipped, right? Um, but we know that those coefficients represent moles as well. What we know that those coefficients do not represent is a ratio of grams. Okay, so this will be coming up in a topic soon. Um, if it feels like I am emphasizing it, I am, uh, but we will address the specifics in a different lesson. So let's interpret this um, from a mole concept using this equation. We've got octane, two moles of octane reacting with 25 moles of oxygen 
to make 16 moles of carbon dioxide and 18 moles of water. So what we're going to do now, instead of using the ratio method that we used in the previous question, we're going to go back and use our uh, conversion fraction, our um, dimensional anal analysis technique. And so I'll show you how to get that set up using, this, using these kind of problems. All right, so we're going to think of this as conversions. And when we do conversions, you always want to find the quantity that you are being given. The quantity that we are being given is 50 moles of oxygen gas, right? And from this, we're going to cons the, the reaction is going to consume it or use it up. And, and when we use 50 moles of oxygen gas, how many moles of water can be produced? So with all conversion problems, always start with the quantity given, 50 moles of oxygen, O2. So we're going to set that up like our typical conversion fractions, how they, how we set them up um, as we've done before. Now at this point, we know we want to convert from, uh, we want to cancel moles of O2. Uh, but what we're now trying to do, and this is where our, this technique is going to divert a little bit, we want to convert that to moles of water. Okay, so here's where it's going to be important that you are identifying the substance you're working with. We put moles of O2 in the denominator so it would cancel with the moles of the O2 in our original problem. And we want to convert that to moles of water. So the question is, how many moles of oxygen are, will correspond to how many moles of water? These numbers come from the coefficients of the balanced equation. And that's important to recognize that it has to be the balanced equation. So the number of moles of water that we make from this equation is 18. And the moles of O2 that we use up are 25. So this is basically saying it's a ratio. We're setting up a ratio, but we're doing it through dimensional analysis. right? And so for every 18 molecules of water produced, 25 moles or molecules of oxygen are consumed. So moles of O2 are going to cancel with each other. The unit left over is moles of water. And then the math just becomes 50 times 18 divided by 25. Okay, so let's see. Glare on that light is just terrible. Um, 50 times 18 divided by 25, and we get 36. And we're going to, I'm going to make, uh, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go back and put a decimal after the 50 so that I can capture these two significant figures, uh, just so we can move on with the, con the concept of the problems and not get too dragged down by sig figs. So 36 is our calculator answer, moles is the unit, and the identity of the substance is water. It's really important in these problems that we're identifying the substance, really important that we're identifying the substance, because we are now dealing with different substances. So let's take a look at another problem right here, using the same balanced equation. Burning 8 moles of octane will produce how many moles of carbon dioxide gas? So again, we're identifying the given quantity, and that's where we're going to begin, 8.0 moles of octane. Octane is the C8H18. And we're trying to find moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, so I'm going to keep my fingers on those two chemicals so we can keep track. In my math problem, I want moles of octane to cancel. So moles of C8H18 goes down here in the denominator. Moles of CO2 goes in the numerator. And now I just need my coefficients for my balanced equations. Equation, right? In front of moles of carbon dioxide, I had 16. And the moles of octane is 2. If I show moles of C8H18 canceling, the only unit left over is moles of CO2. And the math then becomes, let's see, 8 times 16 
divide by 2, and you're going to get 64. How many moles of oxygen gas are needed to burn 14 moles of octane? How many moles of oxygen gas? That's what we're trying to find. 14 moles of octane is what is given. So 14 moles of, again, octane, so C8, H18. I want moles of C8, H18 to cancel, so that goes in the denominator. I want to solve for moles of oxygen gas. The coefficients go in here, so I have to go back to my balanced equation. 25 moles of O2, 2 moles of octane, moles of C8H18 are going to cancel, and the math then becomes 14 times 25 divided by 2, and I get 175, and if I'm minding my significant figures, I had only 2 to begin with, so this would probably have to round to 180, uh, and then the unit here is moles of O2. All right, let's try a different equation, different problem here. Okay, so in this uh, problem, we have a, um, it's interesting that it, to note that this is a balanced equation. You will have to recognize that if you're given an unbalanced equation, you would have to balance it first. So it's already balanced, so we can uh, move on. So we've got three moles of nickel sulfate, two moles of aluminum chloride, one mole of aluminum sulfate, and three moles of nickel chloride. So this one you're going to have to um, know, make sure you're looking at the correct substance from these problems. So the question here says how many moles of aluminum sulfate could be formed from 0.442 moles of, I'm going to move this up here because it got chopped off, 0.442 moles of aluminum chloride. So I've got a given quantity, right? And we know we're always going to put the given quantity at the beginning. So 0.442 moles of aluminum chloride, I'm going to write that formula, AlCl3. Set up the brackets. I want moles of AlCl3 to cancel. And I'm trying to find moles of aluminum sulfate. So aluminum sulfate is this substance here. So moles Al2SO4, 3. Now I need my coefficients for my balanced equation. The mole number, or the coefficient in front of aluminum sulfate is 1. And in front of the aluminum chloride is 2. So moles of aluminum chloride will cancel. Moles of aluminum sulfate is my unit. And the math becomes 0.442 times 1 divided by 2. And I get 0.221 moles. Part B, how many moles of NiSO4, that's what I'm solving for, would react with 6 moles of aluminum chloride? So 6.0 moles AlCl3 I want that to cancel. Moles of AlCl3 goes into the denominator. I'm trying to go to moles of NiSO4. I have to now look at my balanced equation. Nickel sulfate has a coefficient of 3. AlCl3 has a coefficient of 2. Moles of AlCl3 ALCL cancel. The unit I am left with is moles of NiSO4. The math then becomes 6 times 3, divide by 2, and of course that works out to 9. We're going to call it 9.0 to maintain significant figures. 
If 9.3 moles of NiCl2 are formed, how many moles of Al2SO43 will be formed? Okay. So uh, you may notice that it doesn't matter whether the given quantity is a reactant or a product. It doesn't matter if the substance you are solving for is a reactant or a product. So it doesn't matter what side of the equation you're starting on. If you were wondering that, it does not matter. So I'm starting with my given quantity, 9.3 moles of NiCl2. I'm going to cancel moles of NiCl2. And I want to convert to Al2SO4-3. Oh, moles of that. Okay, so find those coefficients from the balanced equation. The coefficient in front of the Al2 SO4-3 is a 1. And the coefficient in front of the NiCl2 is 3. Moles of NiCl2 cancel. I am left with moles of Al2 SO4-3. And the math becomes, you could probably do this in your head, but in the calculator, 9.3 times 1 divided by 3, and of course you get 3.1 moles. All right, let's take a look at the last problem in this lesson. All right, again, we have a balanced equation, so let's take a look at what we've got. We've got one mole of methane. We've got two moles of oxygen. We've got one mole of carbon dioxide, and we've got two moles of water. Okay, so that's what we're working with in this balanced equation. We are being asked to find how many moles of carbon dioxide can be produced from the given quantity of 6.7 moles of methane. So I'm going to start with 6.7 moles of methane. Methane, of course, is the CH4. I want moles of methane to cancel. And I'm trying to convert to moles of carbon dioxide, moles of CO2. From my balanced equation, I've got one mole of CO2, one mole of CH4. So here, the math doesn't change at all. All it does is it justifies how we can say uh, that this, the final answer is in moles of CO2. So we're going to get 6.07 moles of CO2 as our final answer here. Next question, how many moles of oxygen gas? are needed to react with 0.50 moles of methane. Start with that given quantity. That's how we're starting every single one of these problems. 0.050 moles of methane. Moles of methane needs to now cancel. We're trying to solve for moles of oxygen gas, so moles of O2 up top. From our balanced equation, two moles of O2 over one mole of methane. Moles of methane cancel. The math here is should be pretty straightforward, but 0.5 times 2 gives you, uh, to maintain significant figures, we're going to have 1.0 mole, um, yeah, moles of O2. Uh, last question here is asking us to think a little bit. Think about your answer to question 4B right here. If we figured out that we were going to need one mole of oxygen gas, how many grams of oxygen gas would that be? One mole of oxygen gas. Well, this is where you consult the periodic table. You look up the molar mass of oxygen. One oxygen is 16.0, but we have two of them. So one mole of oxygen would weigh 32.0 grams. All right, this was your first lesson in stoichiometry where we were converting moles of one quantity in a balanced equation and we were using that to predict a quantity in moles of a different substance in that balanced equation.
So welcome to the world of stoichiometry. We'll see you back in the classroom.